arriving at a robust project schedule can be difficult. But in this video, I'm going to break it down into a simple process of three phases with a total of 10 steps. The three phases that we're going to look at are understanding, estimating, and consolidating. Let's start with phase one, understanding. Step one is to understand the context of your project. This will give you a sense of the political dimension of your project, but also the external dependencies, all the things that are going on around your project that can have impact on what you're doing. They can either be dependencies that dictate when you do things and how you do things, or the constraints which limit your choices. Step two is to understand the history that is relevant to your project. Look for reference projects and parametric data that you can use for making your estimates. Parametric estimating can be one of the most robust approaches that you could take, as long as the reference projects that you use are truly comparable to the project that you're going to be doing. So it's not only important to understand the similarities, it's also critical that you understand any systematic differences between your reference project and your current project. Step three is to understand the requirements. Do your research on what it is that your stakeholders need and also what they want, what their priorities are and what their preferences are. Also, look at the possible impact of differing priorities amongst your stakeholders. These can cause conflict that can lead to changes in the specification down the line. This is therefore a source of risk and needs to figure in your estimates, particularly in the contingencies that you allocate. Fourth, document your assumptions. All estimates are rooted in a set of assumptions. We need to make assumptions, but if we forget that that is all they are and we fail to document them, then we may not test those assumptions. If they turn out to be correct, then we can have more confidence about our estimates. If they turn out to be wrong, we can change those estimates. So first, articulate and document all of your assumptions. Second, test each of them for validity, or at the very least, plausibility. In the latter case, check the impact of applying alternative plausible assumptions. And if you need to, change the assumptions on which you're going to base your estimating. Phase two, estimating. Step five is to make an initial top level estimate. Start with an initial high level estimate. For this, you can use order of magnitude estimating, top down estimating, parametric estimating, or simply expert judgment. Agile estimating techniques work well here too. Story pointing, t shirt or bucket sizes, or even planning poker. What matters here is bringing to bear your experience and choosing a simple process that will give you a rough idea of the scale of the schedule that you're going to need. Step six is to make a detailed estimate. The most structured approach to this is to break your project down into parts and to use a work breakdown structure and to apply your estimates bottom up to the items on your work breakdown structure. Here is where you might start to apply more sophisticated estimating processes like three point estimates or a Monte Carlo method if the project merits that level of work. We have videos on the PERT method and on Monte Carlo method if you need them, and I'll put links in the description below. Step seven is to express a confidence level for your estimates. Add confidence levels to your estimates so that people can see how certain you are about the scale of your estimates. After all, an estimate only really has value if we know how confident we can be in that estimate. Confidence is the inverse of uncertainty. Experience, data, rigor, checking and review will all decrease the level of uncertainty and therefore increase the confidence in your estimates. 
On the other hand, novelty, ambiguity, volatility and complexity will all reduce the confidence that you can have in your estimates. We often express uncertainty or confidence as a range. A time estimate of 12 days plus or minus two days is an example of a symmetric estimate. A schedule estimate of 30th of September plus 20 days or minus 10 days is an example of an asymmetric estimate. Phase three, protecting. Your confidence levels will inform step eight, contingency. Add extra time to your estimates based on how confident you are in those estimates. For example, how familiar or novel is what you're doing? How complex is it? And what's the level of risk? The greater the uncertainty, the more contingency you need to add to a given estimate. Step nine is what if. Identify some alternative scenarios and then analyze those scenarios to see how they would affect your estimates, your confidence levels and your contingencies. Select a small range of very different plausible scenarios, including some that your team might view as extremely unlikely and use these to further inform the level of contingency that you add to your estimates. And finally, step 10 is checking and reviewing. Always check your arithmetic. Do the simplest possible estimate using the same basic assumptions on the back of an envelope to give your estimates a sense check. For a more robust approach, you may want to carry out a red team review. Find an alternative team of people who have had no involvement whatsoever in developing the estimates, but who understand the project as well. Ask them to go through your estimating process, your assumptions, your contingencies, your confidence levels with a fine tooth comb in an attempt to find where you've made mistakes. If the red team fail to find any significant problem, then there's a good chance your estimates are more robust. On the other hand, if they find problems, you can deal with them. An alternative approach to that is to have a shadow estimating team do the whole thing on their own separately and to compare the results. Once again, if the results are broadly similar, you can have a higher level of confidence in your estimates. On the other hand, if the two teams get very different results, then you need to understand what it is about their assumptions or their approach or their methodology that has driven these different results. If you fail to review and test your estimates at this stage, then you'll lose your chance to put your project schedule right before you embark on a possibly flawed project plan. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be making loads more great project management videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of them. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.